Yo guys, welcome back to King Owls and yes, I've now got a Manchester United video now for you guys. Andre Unana, I think, must be given time and I do feel like we must be patient with Andre Unana. Obviously, ever since he's joined Manchester United, he's had a few decent games. Uh, I thought he was really good in the Wolves game if in, in the first game of the season. If it wasn't for him, we probably would have lost to Wolves, let's be real. Uh, in the Tottenham game... We would have got we would have got smashed by even more goals if it wasn't for Anana. In I mean, but in that Arsenal game though, in the Arsenal game, I feel like he could have saved like two of those goals. Let's be real, he was pretty. He's a bit poor in that game. To be fair, should have at least saved what like the second goal. I think it was. I mean, yeah, I think yeah, kind of being beat at his near post, and obviously yesterday, stupid sloppy mistake made uh, as well. Um, but look, I think we need to give Unana a bit of time to settle into the Prem. The Premier League is completely different to every other league as well. Let's be real, it's the hardest league to play in in the world. So I do feel like we need to give Unana a bit of time, and obviously, you know, playing like in that English football style as well, like you're gonna have to adapt, and that's what he's doing. I don't, I don't think that he's been overly awful. I think people are overreacting a bit. Obviously, yesterday, I feel like his mistake lost the team a lot of confidence, one hundred percent. I wouldn't say it's his. I wouldn't say it's his complete. I wouldn't. It's not completely his fault why we lost that though. It's not at all. It's not Unana's fault why we lost that game. Not just his fault anyway. Yes, he did have a bit of a part to play in why we lost, but it's not just his fault. Um, I mean, the midfield was awful. Uh, defense was awful as well. Uh, but yeah, Unana, he's he got he's got the capabilities. Let's be real. And I feel like you know, I I love David De Gea, obviously, but I think it was time he that for him to leave. And you know, his start uh, De Gea's style of play isn't just it's not what you get in modern day football anymore. That's why that's why not many teams are you know really desperate to sign him anymore. It's the truth. And, and, you know, I like De Gea, but it's the truth, though. Andre Unana, he's got, he's got the footwork, and he made the most saves in the Champions League last season. So, he's a shot, he's 100% a shot stopper. He is a shot stopper. There's, that's not an excuse. He's a very good shot stopper who's very good with his feet. I feel like, it, I've, he, but, you know, yesterday, I, but let's be real, has he really done anything special with his feet just yet, though? Probably not. That's the, that's the thing. I mean, you know, distribution, it is better, you know, he seems a lot more calm and composed, but we haven't seen absolutely amazing stuff from him just yet. And that, I, I do think is on some of our players as well, though. They're not positioning themselves right. They're not fully always getting away from their man. Um, Andre Nana, he did have some good distribution moments against Wolves. That was his best game that he's had for us yet. He did against Tottenham as well. He had some good distribution moments. Yesterday, very poor. Distribution was poor. Um, it was. But, you know, I do think he's someone that needs to be given time. And, you know, the goalkeeper's a big part in a team. You need to adapt to the way... Uh, the players need to adapt to the way that the goalkeeper likes to play. And we also need to remember that the players need to get used to it because we haven't had someone with, you know, as good of distribution as Unana in a long time. Like, Unana's clear over De Gea distribution-wise, 100%. Shot-stopping-wise, probably not. But, you know, Unana's still a really, really, really play good shot-stopper. But, you know, look, overall, he needs to be given time, Andre Onana. That's, you know, I feel like he's, I, I feel like he's got it in him. And, you know, we, he, and yesterday he called himself in for, like, he, you know, wanted to do an interview and explain himself. He's taken full accountability and responsibility. This man is passionate, uh, really passionate and loves to play for the badge. He's probably one of the most passionate players in that team who, who really does, who really does properly care. I mean, oh my God. I saw a video with Scott McTominay yesterday. Uh, it shows him, like, with an awful first touch trying to go in for a tackle. Then he lets the buying player run right through him. And there he is, just, and he's just walking. Not even trying to track back to the midfield. Just staying in it, just staying in buying top. I mean, Scott McTominay is awful. Sell him no passion at all. Unan is one of the most passionate players in the team. 
alongside, I mean, you know, we got a few, we have got quite a few Pasta players. We got Unana, we got Martinez, we got Varane, we got Bruno, we got Rashford, Hoyland. Yeah, I mean, there, there's many more as well, but there are certain players who don't have passion and they're the ones that piss me off the most, such as the Scott McTominay, such as the Harry Maguires. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, look, disappointing from yesterday. We better beat Burnley. That's all I'm going to say. If we don't, I don't know what I say. But yeah. Anyway, thank, but yeah, let's give you nine a time. Let's go Man United. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Okay, I'll speak to you on a bit. Fortune, peace out.